They were going to be studying mathematics. And images from the second mirror. Visual sound. Ah. Be your teacher for today. Hello, student. You are welcome to today's uh, class again. My name is uh, Vincent. This is MSI EduTech Online Home Lesson. You are welcome again. Today we are going to be looking at another interesting topic is temperature and heat. What is temperature? Temperature people define it to be the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. But in real sense, in physics, we define temperature as the average kinetic energy of the molecule of a body. The average kinetic energy of a molecule of a body. Why we define it as the total kinetic energy of the molecule of a body? Heat is the total kinetic energy of a molecule of a body why temperature is the average ki uh, average kinetic energy of the molecule of a body so the two of them are diff uh, they, they are differ although they are similar to one and the other but careful teaching will tell you the similarity and the difference between heat and temperature we should not miss the two as one now, what, when you talk about temperature, what are the units we used to use to measure temperature? Temperature can be measured in Kelvin or in degree uh, Celsius. And the parameter we use to measure temperature is thermometer. For it, it has no specific instrument for us to measure the amount of heat in the body except by calculation. We can only determine the amount of heat in a body. So there is no particular device like thermometer that we use to carry out the measurement of heat. So we don't have any device. We can only determine the quantity of heat in a body by the use of the mass of the body, the specific capacity of the body, and the ten change in temperature of the body. These are the things we use to measure the quantity of heat in a body. It's not, there is no parameter to do that. So we are going to look at it one after the other. We are going to see temperature. So as I talk about temperature, is the, the, is the average kinetic energy of the molecule of a body. Now, temperature is a physical property that tells us the direction of heat flows. It's a physical property. It actually tells us how the heat flows from one part to the other through the use of a thermometer. So it's a physical property that tells us the direction of heat flow. That is temperature. So the, the, the unit of temperature, I'll be the instrument for measuring the temperature is thermometer. So why heat is, temperature is a physical quantity. Why heat is an internal phenomenon. It's an internal phenomenon in a body is talk about internal phenomenon of a body so temperature is the physical property so when you look at temperature we can only actually now state the difference between heat and temperature the difference between temperature and heat is that number one temperature is a is the average kinetic energy of the molecule in a body why heat is the total kinetic energy of the molecule in a body. Another difference between temperature and heat is that uh, temperature is measured with the use of thermometer, while there is no specific instrument for measuring heat. For heat temperature, the unit of thermometer, or the unit of, we use to measure temperature, is degree Celsius or Kelvin why there's no uh, uh why the unit of it is joe the unit of it is joe now when you look at that we now can come to the similarity between the two of them temperature and heat they are both scalar quantity why uh, they have their own specific unit these are the two major similarity between heat and temperature so as we look at the temperature there are there are uh, thermometric scale that we use 
like Fahrenheit scale, like Kelvin scale, and like Celsius scale that we use to measure it, which can be converted from either Celsius to Kelvin, either from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. So let's see the three scale. And there are two fundamental fixed points in each of them. For Celsius scale, it has two fixed points, the lower fixed point and the upper fixed point. So also the Kelvin scale, it has a lower fixed point and the upper fixed point, which is called the melting and the boiling point respectively. And for also for Fahrenheit, for the melting point of Celsius, it's zero degree Celsius. While the boiling point of Celsius is 100 degree Celsius. Now for Kelvin scale, the melting point is 273 Kelvin degree Kelvin. The boiling point is 373 degree Kelvin. In case of Fahrenheit scale, the melting point is 32 degree Fahrenheit, while the boiling point is uh, 32 and uh, 212 degree Fahrenheit, respectively. So we can see the scale now. For scale, we have three scales. We have sensor scale, Kelvin scale, Fahrenheit scale. For Kelvin, for uh, sensor scale, the boiling point is 100, the melting point is zero degree Celsius. Now, the interval between the boiling point and the melting point is called the fundamental interval, which is Fi. So, how to get that is the boiling point minus the melting point that will give us the fundamental interval of a Celsius scale. Then, for Kelvin scale, the boiling point is 373, the melting point is 273. So, the fundamental interval here is boiling point minus the melting point. If you do that, you have 100 degree Kelvin. That is fundamental interval. So, for Fahrenheit, we have the boiling point 212 degree Fahrenheit, the melting point 32 degree Fahrenheit. So the fundamental interval is the difference between the boiling point and the melting point, which is 212 minus 32 degree Fahrenheit. If you subtract them, you have 180 degree Fahrenheit. So majorly in calculation, this is what we use to do the calculation. To convert from one temperature or to get one uh, parameter reading on a particular body or of the thermometer. Now, R is the reading on the thermometer that you are given. Now, this is the melting point of that particular thermometer you are using, and the fundamental interval of that particular thermometer. Now, this will go with the second thermometer because if you are given a thermometer to be used, they can ask you to convert your reading to the other scale. So that's why we you make use of the, two, the formula together at the same time. So this one will go with the one given, while this one will go with the one you want to convert to. So if I'm given Celsius scale and I want to convert to Fahrenheit scale, this will go with Celsius scale, while this one will go with Fahrenheit scale. Meaning that this will be my reading on the Celsius scale. This is the melting point of Celsius, which is zero. This is the fundamental interval, which is 100, you know. So this reading is what will be given. That's what to convert to Fahrenheit. So this one will be zero. This one will be 100. This one will be given in the equation. Now, this is what you are converting to. I'm converting to Fahrenheit. I'm converting to Fahrenheit. So this will not be unknown. Since this one is given, this one is now unknown. This one is known. The melting point of Fahrenheit, 32. Fundamental interval is 180. Once you have those parameters, you can actually manipulate and get the conversion right. We are going to look at example now.
So illustration one, convert 12 degrees Celsius to, is it, uh, to degree Fahrenheit. What you need to do now is to represent the 12 degree centigrade in Celsius K. This is the reading. This one represents the Celsius K. This is zero degree Celsius. Why here is 100 degree Celsius. This is where you are going to put the reading. You don't need to measure it. This is the 12 degree Celsius now on this thermometric scale. So this is what you want to convert to Fahrenheit now. So you have to draw the Fahrenheit scale alongside with it. So here is 32 given. Here is 212 degree Fahrenheit. Now here is the R that we don't know, the reading that we are looking for, that we don't know, that is our R. So, the fundamental interval here is 180. If you remember, we have gotten it here. The fundamental interval here is 100. So, remember or record the formula, recall, R minus MP, F dot I equal to R minus M P F dot I. So the reading here is this 12. You have it. The fundamental uh, the melting point here is zero. The fundamental interval is this minus this already, which is constant 100. The reading here is R that you are looking for. The melting point here is 32. The fundamental interval here is 180. That's about that. So Now, we have 12 here over 100 equal to R minus 32 over 180. If you cross multiply this, we have a R minus 32, 100 equal to 12 times 180. So, when you open the bracket, 100 R, open the bracket, that is 32, 0, 0. You give us 12 times 180. So we have 100 R. This one go to the other side. We have 12 times 180 plus 32 zero zero. So when you multiply this, we have a 2160 plus 32 zero zero. So we have 100 R equal to so have 100 r equal to add this one to this 0 6 3 5 so 100 so have r equal to 5 3 6 0 divided by 100 so this will give us 53.6 degree fahrenheit as our final solution so we look at other scale to another this is from Celsius to Fahrenheit let's pick another one from rather Kelvin to Fahrenheit as the case may be so illustration 2 we have to convert 1 2 3 degrees Celsius to Kelvin so we go by doing the diagram first for Celsius zero degrees C, 100 degrees C. The reading is that 123 on the Celsius scale. But we want to know what it will be on the Kelvin scale. So you have to put a Kelvin scale beside it. So for Kelvin scale, we have 273 as the melting point and we have 373 at the boiling point. This is now what we are looking for, the R, the reading, this one will be on this second scale. So we, we record that reading on the sensor scale minus the melting point on the sensor scale over the fundamental interval in the, in the second, in the sensor scale equal to the reading in the Kelvin scale minus the melting point in the Kelvin scale and the fundamental interval on that particular 
scale. So the reading here is one, two, three. So the fundamental, the melting point is zero, which is zero. This is MP, this is BP, this is BP, the boiling point, this is the melting point. So this one over 100, as usual, this minus this give us the 100. So the reading here is what we are looking for, that's our target. Melting point is 273. Then the fundamental interval as is also 100. The difference between this and this will give us the fundamental interval. So if we do the subtraction, we have 1, 2, 3, all over 100. And we have R minus 273, all over 100. So when you cross multiply, we have a 1, 2, 3 times 100 equal to 100 into R minus 273. So when you open the bracket, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, that will give us 100 R minus 273, 0, 0. So if this one come here, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, equal to 100 plus 27300 equal to 100 R. So this one give us 0, 0, 6, 9, 3, equal to 100 R. So R will be 39600 over 100. So we have 396. It's on curvy. Kevis K for illustration two. So the third illustration will be specifically based on the type of thermometer, no longer on the scales used in thermometer now. It's going to be on type of thermometer. And we have the following type of thermometer. We have the mercury in glass thermometer, the mercury in glass thermometer we have the thermocouple thermometer we have uh, the six maximum a minimum Thermometer. So we have the fourth one, resistance. Resistance. Platinum thermometer. So we have five, the clinical thermometer. So we have six. So laboratory thermometer. So the calculation we can you can come across under this one follow the same pattern. You have to generate the formula according to the nature of the thermometer for example the nature of the formula goes like this arrow at t minus arrow at theta arrow at zero over the arrow at 100 minus arrow at zero times 100 degree so this is the temperature that's how to get the temperature now this is how the formula you will use for everything that's the formula. So the only thing that uh, you cannot adopt a particular letter. This one cannot be resistance because we make, we make resistance and uh, platinum thermometer. We can adopt this number. If I want to write another one, maybe for thermocouple, I can use capital letter T to write it in this form. I can do it another one like this. I can say the temperature is, I can say P T minus P zero P at 100 
minus P at zero times hundred degree. So I can I can also pick another one according to the letter six maximum or resistance thermometer or mercury or thermometer. I can say okay T that is the temperature equal to if it is thermocouple I'm doing I can say T at small t minus t at zero and t at hundred minus t at zero times hundred degree so the formula is just unique in the same way so we are going to see example the example we are going to see will tell you how we bring out the formula so you have to see the question and now I put the formula to suit the question. So we are going to see illustration theory will describe or will tell us how we can solve problem on that. Under this illustration theory, we are going to see how we are going to build the formula on our own by following the question. The ice and the steam point. So the ice is the melting point. So the steam that is the boiling point of a mercury in glass thermometer are minus 5 degree and 10C, 103 degree C respectively. So determine the reading on the thermometer when the reading is 50 degree C. 50 degree C. So now to build the formula we have so if it is mercury thermometer we have T go to the M at T M at 0 M at 100 that's at the steam and us M at 0 times 100 degree so how to actually know that's the formula the parameter here now look at this place they say at the ice point and at the steam hot so this is at the ice point this is at the steam so this is at zero and this is at hundred at hundred some question will actually tell you that this value at zero this question is a little bit uh, different from that some question will come to you and tell you that this one uh, instead of using ice they will say at zero and air at 100 so directly you will know so this is another language instead of them say at zero and at 100 they say at ice and at steam so now we now come here our temperature our t is equal to 50 degrees c then our mt that's what we are looking for at the mercury at zero is that minus five then at 100 is that a 103 so this is what we are going to put into this place so we are now going to have 50 equal to mt that's what we are looking for that's the temperature that's the reading at that point minus m naught which is 5 all over 103 minus minus 5 times under so we are going to have 50 equal to mt plus 5 equal to 103 plus 5 so times 100 that's what we are going to have so if we cross multiply we are going to have we have this one we are going to have 50 equal mt plus 5 108 times 100 so you cross multiply we have mt plus 5 times 100 equal to 50 times 108 so have 100 mt 
500 equal to 50 times 108 so half 100 mt 500 times 108 minus 500 this will come to this place so we do the arithmetic i'm going to have mt to 50 times 108 minus 500 whatever you get if you multiply this 50 by 108 you are going to have 5 400 so minus 500 all over 100 so if you do that this is 0 is 0 uh, 9 4 divided by 100 that is empty so this one comes with this it's 49 degree so that the the empty 49 degree so that's the the reading for that particular thermometer and the reading for that particular thermometer so this one the formula is a little bit different from the first one on sensor scale Now, if you have been following the class, these are the questions you will be expecting to attempt at the end of the topic. The first question says, the lower and the upper face point of a thermometer are 30 mm and 180 mm respectively. Calculate the temperature in degree Celsius when the thermometer reads 45 mm the second question do the following conversion 20 degree c to zero to fahrenheit minus 80 degree c to degree fahrenheit 110 degree fahrenheit to celsius minus 60 degree fahrenheit to celsius the third one a thermometer with an arbitrary scales x of equal division register minus 30 x at the ice point and plus 90 s at the steam point calculate the celsius temperature corresponding to 60 degree scale these are the questions you will find interesting at the end of the topic if you consider this question and you find out that uh, you still have one or two challenges please you can reach us on the whatsapp number displayed on the screen and we pay attention to your question and we'll get back to you in a short time thank you